Boa and Corona. This is the channel that shared my video when I was doing, um, when I was covering Pride Parade and how the town had basically officialized that we were, we were doing Pride and they made the rainbow color of our, of our flag and stuff like that. Or as a rainbow flag logo of our city. And this is largely a conservative town. So I was just like, I don't understand how people are getting on board with this. This can't be right. I think this is like a usurpation kind of thing. So I was pretty confrontational. I did the video and they shared it and they got what, like 600 views. And for a local town as small as this, that's a lot. 600 yeah. views. That pretty much ruined my social life. <laughs> that oh, 600 man. views, which goes back to the truth cat. Because you have seemingly three kinds of people. The people who are go along to get along. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there are, I guess, for a few kinds of people. I shouldn't say three. You have the people pushing crazy stuff. And you have their allies. Yep. And then you have people that are go along to get along. And just want to keep their head down. Just please don't bother me. I don't want to talk about it. And then you have the completely uninitiated. They have no idea what what is going on. They don't know why you're upset about it because they don't even know what it is. Yeah. Completely initiated. They they had, they they got their face in their TikTok, and they're just laughing like Patrick on SpongeBob all day. Just <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what's going on in the world around them. And then you have. The people who are pushing back against this stuff in a crusader fashion, yeah. you could put me in that category, sometimes to a fault. But then you have the people who agree with you, but they're not going to do anything. They're not going to say anything. They might send you a, a friendly message on Facebook and say, hey, man, I really appreciate what you're doing. I couldn't, you know, I can't really put myself out there because I got a family to feed. I got kids in school, so I got, I don't want them kicked out of school. Yeah. And so when, when stuff like this happens, we are talking to those people. That's largely who I'm talking to, the people who are saying, I agree with you, but I can't say anything. So here's the story. Owasso, Michigan. And it's got a long freaking name or title, headline, whatever. But we're just going to read here. Um, Owasso, Michigan, history has a ha, is repeating itself. In the 1920s, a group of bigots called themselves some Ks who were against moderate Democrats, Republicans, and Catholics held secret meetings, parades, and events, including or calling for boycotts on Republican and Catholic businesses. In the 1920s, as well as today, prominent people belonging to a secret organization and local ministerial clergy and editors of local newspapers back them. Okay, now this part I didn't know. So we have, I'm gonna come back to this because that was something that I, I hadn't read the article fully. I just kind of skimmed through it. And I hadn't, I didn't notice that when I first read it. Yeah. The difference is in the 1920s, these K's were not sexist, were not a sexist organization that only allowed women to be members as this new group does. At the time, as today, plants were brought into communities to turn people into bigots, supporting the philosophy of the secret group that preyed on and persecuted people not like them. I love how vague this is written, but like you know what he's saying, you know what he's talking about. Yeah. If you've been following local newspaper stories, you will have read about a secret group started by a recent transplant and city councilwoman. The papers have gone into depth on this secret group called the Fair Mavens. The Mavens is a worldwide group dedicated to doing whatever it takes to turn people in a community into progressives that are bigoted toward Christians and conservatives. Presently, there are two Owasso city councilwomen, several female business owners, and prominent women who are members of the private group called the Fair Mavens that discuss online their philosophy and of being against anyone who is not like them. They call for boycotts and work in the shadows to destroy the fabric of 
a community. That is a one heck of an opening wow. section here. So basically, you had the plant and you had the other woman because I knew there was the one woman, Jeannie or Jeanine or something, and she was pushing the whole like trans the kids ideology. And I had said a couple things about that. And she's embedded in the school system and somehow, like, I don't know how people like this get powerful. But then you had this other lady who came in and um, she was voted on to the Owasso City Council. And this is exactly why I was upset during the whole Pride thing, because I, when that happened, I was like, well, this is only happening because it's being allowed to happen. Yeah. So I went down to City Hall to register for... Um, for the next election. Yeah. And I was like, people don't know me, but I can get to know people. I'm forward with my views. And if they like what I have to say, then they'll vote for me, right? Well, I live just that far outside of the city lines and I wasn't able to do it. And when the lady in the office, she goes, well, what are you looking to change? And it like took me back because I was like, what do you mean? What am I looking to change, dude? Is that why you sign up for city council? Cause you want to change? No. I'm signing up for city council because I want to ensure that things remain like solid yeah. and I want to help keep things moving in, in the right direction. I, I don't want to join city council to change things. Like that was, that was a bizarre question, assumption really. Well, yeah. maybe that was because we had a bunch of other kooky people who had their ideas. There's a lot of like sexually oriented people joining and running for city council because they want to change things in that specific area and it's like people have their preferences people don't want to do what they're going to do but it's when you're trying to push stuff on people like you know what i mean yeah that's generate that's that's degeneracy like these are the same people that are like no to christian nationalism like how is that any different it isn't and so this woman is on city council, right? And then the first, um, the first, like the swearing in ceremony, she laughs during the opening prayer and refuses to stand for the national anthem. So, you know, naturally, all of the veterans are pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, what are you thinking? <laughs> That's horrible. All of, all of the people who have some stake here property here blood and treasure are like what is this crap but here's my question those and and, and like the because the next city hall meeting it was packed out right everybody was pissed off everybody was there you know expressing their grievances and stuff like that yeah so they had time to to go to the city hall meeting i did not i was at work and i had a uh, another thing and i live outside the city anyway so by that much but why weren't these men on the ballot that's a good question where where were the upstanding men who who have something to stand for when it came time to vote some people in the office why where were they why weren't they on the ballot they got this free time to go to city hall meetings and complain but they can't be there like because like the, if there were enough decent people on the ballot it would have displaced this crazy lady. Yeah. And they would have been like several normal people to vote for. And, and then this one person over here, it's like talking crazy stuff. And you're like, I'm going to pan on the crazy. Let's look at these guys. We got some good, decent, strong men. Oh, this guy served in the military. Oh, this guy's been a business owner for so how many years? Oh, look at this guy. This guy's got a family. He's, he's raised eight kids. He must know what he's doing. No, none of that. No, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what were, they must have been watching the game or something. They was taking the day off. Yeah. They were nowhere to be found. And now we got this like trans activist crazy witch in office making plans for the city. It sounds like a science fiction novel or something. It sounds like a horror movie. It's horrible. Like, is it that the requirements you have to change? things that are going on like what why why would this happen now like i don't know keeping things in a sort of same direction and trying to improve slowly is normally a better option but 
clearly that's not what they're now they're going to start like, changing the rules or it's like you have to be a witch to run <laughs> and that might be off-putting for some people look, get, look just like believe me these are witches when you go in the comment section of this article you see people saying things that only witches say <laughs> okay i'm sending my my light and good vibes and my spells your direction normal people don't say stuff like that you know who says that they're gonna send spells in your direction is yeah so it's not weird for me to say that like if you call a duck a duck call a witch a witch you have a witch in office and she's making other witches that can't be good guys like we already have a human trafficking problem Let's finish this article. This is the first installment of several that we will bring you all 102 members' names. That's how many people in this small town. A video with 600 views made it to where I can barely walk around downtown. There are 102 prominent local business owners and, and prominent individuals in this secret society for females only. So. The, the, the women are largely the people that drive the philosophy of the family. You marry a man who agrees with you so that you don't have to fight over what that philosophy is going to become. Because the man is the provider. Man is trying to provide clarity on tougher issues and make hard decisions. But, but largely, it's the women that are teaching the children. It's the women that are constantly bringing things up about that philosophy in the home. And making the house into a home and this is the setting that you're going to live in and when that's being orchestrated by a witch you're just going to start drifting that way or unless you get a divorce so the, 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 they're going to lead their families this way and i mean I, I, honestly if your wife is going to a secret witch meetings like you can't really have like a whole lot of control over your family as it is like I, I can only imagine that the, the women, that the men that these women are married to are not the most masculine or don't value their role as men at all. This is like the yes, dear, whatever you say. Like you ever, you ever be like in the supermarket and you have this old lady like, come on, Frank. And like, you know what I mean? Because like yeah. somebody's talking to me, who do you think you're talking to, first of all? You know, <laughs> like we can't. <laughs> He just, oh, okay, I'm sorry, dear. Oh. Or it's like, I hey, he's looking at a book that he wants, and he's just like, oh, I just wanted to live. Hey, guys, we can write in our box. It was like, okay, look, woman, you ain't going to be talking to me like I'm six years old. <laughs> <laughs> there's only two ways that conversation goes, you know? It's going to be, okay, you want to have a fight in public? Let's do it. And there's a couple that comes in. They have a fight in public every time. Oh, and wow. I, as loud as they are, I'm always like, good for him. I'm <laughs> 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 This is this, this is a naggy woman, and she is not gonna give him a moment's peace, and he can give her all the same hell right back. <laughs> so, and then you got all these little sniveling coward, not mad, just not masculine men, and they're just yes, dear, whatever you say, dear. Oh, yeah. you're gonna go to the witch meeting? Okay, dear. It's a problem. Like this is a huge problem, considering we just got off of like the whole feminism being rampant in the nineties. <laughs> like this just is like the perfect. Perfect storm for this to happen. This is the uh, logical conclusion of feminism. Yeah. So they they released a document. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let's, let's see. A local female pastor. <laughs> of course. Of course. It's like Why not? Florida man. <laughs> a local female pastor and community commit. Yes, because I, I, I want to read this so bad. <laughs> No, like whenever you hear like a church is doing some crazy stuff, and, and then it, we're gonna talk to their pastor. Here's Pastor Linda. <laughs> it's, it's always, okay, of course, it's a local female church pastor. It's probably the church that's got the rainbow flag flying out in front of it too, and a county commissioner that supports the person that started the group stated to us in an interview that the pastors and members of many large churches do not support this secret group's beliefs are churches that worship America. So basically they're saying anybody who doesn't believe like them worships America. 
I'm not even like freaked out. That's not. I'm, I'm not even weirded out by that because I've heard other churches say that kind of stuff. These churches, they worship, they worship this. They work like you don't know nothing about the other denomination, but you you got so, uh, plenty to say about them. That yeah. is just that sickening to me. And this is like another step in that direction. So, you know, the gay pride female pastor led church thinks that churches that don't think like her just worship America. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then they came out with a with a, a, an exciting conclusion to this story. And oh my God, let me tell you, I'm not even gonna scroll down the comments because I'm not, I'm not jumping in now. I'm that barrel again. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Uh, <laughs> the exciting the, the comments in that are high quality to say the least. <laughs> high quality. You got you got women that are gaslighting. Oh, this is just ridiculous. This isn't no, absolutely not. I can't believe you would post this. This is ridiculous. I'm going to send my spells and vibes your way. <laughs> and, then you have, and then you have people that are like straight up like you didn't have to post their names. They're not refuting anything else. They're just it's not cool that you posted their names. You're supposed to let them operate in the shadows. That's how ninjas are supposed to operate. You can't go for it. Why you, you post my name? Knock it off. <laughs> Come on, dog. I'm trying to run a boycott. You can't tell people who I am. <laughs> how I'm supposed to get close enough to get your hair for a spell if you looking out for it. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm making fun of it because I care. I just dropped a jelly bean and I don't know where it was. I feel like this should have been like the Halloween episode. Like we have witches and we have cats. Like this is perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is bad, bro. I haven't had like a decent night's sleep since the story came out. Cause I knew there was like some kind of witchcraft going on. Like you could just tell, I don't know if you could tell, like I'm real susceptible to this stuff and I could just tell I wake up at three o'clock in the morning consecutively for like three weeks. And I just start praying because I'm like, I don't even know, man. Like, I know that's supposed to be like the witching hour around this is superstition or whatever. But like, I'm not even going to like pretend like I don't care. You know, like if that's what's going on and I just get up and start praying about this stuff. It's creepy. It's obviously happening. Um, I think a lot of people would like to believe that it's not happening, but I can't I can't be that that loose about it. <laughs> 